Good afternoon, Karen, and thank you for having me. I um, have spent most of my legal career as a uh, worker rights attorney, uh, focusing mainly on immigration. So when we talk about uh, the, the pervasive sexual harassment in, in our workplace, both in the private and public sector. It's something that I myself um, am very familiar with, not only as an attorney, but on a personal level. You know, I um, have been working uh, since I got elected in uh, 2018, when I took office in 2019, with the Sexual Harassment Working Group, with Erica and, and, and the amazing team um, that have helped us build uh, the kind of legislation that there really gets not only at the root of the problem uh, when we were talking about uh, the pervasive sexual harassment within Albany, but also within the workplace throughout the state, um, but really looking at the idea that sometimes you got to deter behavior with a little bit of a stronger hand, that it's not just about the training, but if we are not convincing folks to do the right thing via training, then we got to look at punishment. We got to look at financial consequences for the, the wrong actions uh, that, that folks are undertaking. Um, I happen to represent uh, workers that are very vulnerable as members of my community. Um, we're talking immigrant uh, mothers, many of them undocumented. We're talking um, the kinds of folks who during the pandemic had no choice but to work. You know, and I think uh, when we speak about sexual harassment, we often um, are mining it. It goes to the professional sector, the kind of workplace that many of us are used to being at. We, we think about Albany, but we also need to think about what happens to um, the our service workers, the women who are taking care of our kids, the restaurant workers, the supermarket workers, the kind of workers that if their supervisor I'll just say it, uh, it begins to sexually harass them, ask for a sexual favor in exchange for a shift or um, for increased salary, they're going to have a much harder time defending themselves. And that is why we work to change that. And over the last couple of years since I've been in office, um, we've seen uh, the, uh, the culture in Albany take, I would argue, a drastic change. I used to be a staffer for a very long time. Um, and, and, and I think um, Erica has heard me speak about before how I would um, purposely address a certain way to not attract attention because that's the reality of the world we were living in. And now with more women being in office, with more women being in leadership positions, even within our teams, we feel much more comfortable being who we are because we shouldn't have to feel afraid to go to work every day and, and, and think that, you know, a colleague or another staffer is going to sexually harass us because that's the reality that Albany had faced for a very long time. You know, and everything from, from, from um, implementing uh, um, training requirements to uh, creating the kind of atmosphere that allowed us to even have this conversation. You know, under the leadership of, uh, of Alessandra, you know, we had our very first hearing on the issue um, in, in decades. You know, no one had actually talked about this openly and about um, the kind of workplace that many of us were forced to be a part of while we were in Albany. And to see it, um, to see something as basic as a hearing, create the kind of um, a system that allowed us to have the conversation um, was incredible and, and, and to be a part of that. And um, you know, now we're looking at various pieces of legislation that really tackle everything from um, if you want to be a part of our system, meaning the policymaking system, if you're going to be a lobbyist, if you're going to be a legislator, what are we changing? Um, what requirements are we placing on you to have training, to abide by the rules, and what happens if you don't abide by them? I myself, I'm carrying a bill that basically says if you're a lobbyist, if you have to take this particular type of training um, to make sure that you are in fully aware I mean, one would argue you should be aware that you shouldn't be sexually harassing anyone, but to make sure that you understand that, that, that the privilege of getting to, um, to advocate for your client can be taken away if you're not going to respect our rules and our regulations. We have um, other uh, laws that we're working on that go to protect the folks who come forward and, and, and speak up. Um, and I say folks because while the majority of the survivors have been women um, and folks who, who identify as women, um, in, in, 
we can't be blind to the fact that we have uh, members of our LGBTQI community who could be facing harassment now in the workplace um, in Albany as well as the men. And so how do we protect them to make sure that we are creating an entire ecosystem within the workplace in Albany and outside of Albany. And I keep on saying Albany because we gotta lead by example. We can't go out and make laws that are going to tackle the issues in, in the private sector or even the public sector outside of Albany if we're not cleaning house. And we have to lead by example. And so we are creating the kind of laws that's, that, that also say, if you are coming forward and if you decide that you're gonna take a settlement, that shouldn't bar you from ever being a part of our system. It shouldn't bar you from getting a, a job in another place within our legislature, be the Senate, the assembly and another piece, a part of government, because that's been the routine. The routine has been to place these, uh, uh, these clauses that basically bar you from ever re-entering the kind of industry that you've come to love and that someone basically pushed you out of because of their own wrong behavior. And so um, that's another piece that we're looking at. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that because I, I, I look forward to the conversation we're gonna have, but I think the most important uh, thing that I've seen over the last two years is a change in culture that allows us to even have conversation like what we're having now. I have been a staffer on and off for the last 10 years. I was a staffer at the city council where routinely I would get uh, eyeballed and uh, thankfully I had an amazing boss who stood up for me every time. But I don't ever remember a conversation like this happening there. I don't ever remember a conversation like this happening in, in the state legislature when, when I was a staffer for, for agencies. And so the simple fact that we are changing that piece, that we now are openly speaking about it and that we have the support of women, that we have the support of, I see Stanley is gonna be with us today who I adore, that we have the support of just the kind of folks who understand that unless we clean house in Albany, we have in, in, in Spanish we say, no, no tenemos cara, we don't, we can't really go out and face the world and say, well, you, the private sector should be really protecting your workers if we can't do that for our own.